What's up guys, Ivan Carranza here and welcome to Bass, bass Tone, bass, tone, 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 Tuesday. tone Tuesday. Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about how to record bass covers for the internet and also how to get a good tone. And recently I recorded or I uploaded a cover of Megadeth, the song Symphony of Destruction. And Megadeth is one of my favorite bands of all time. And I was not expecting that the bass player David Elfson would share my video on Facebook and that definitely, you know, made me really happy. But I thought I could use that song as an example of the process or to show you my process when I record a, a bass cover. I know this is not the focus of the channel to record or to upload bass covers, but I know a lot of people want to do that and I would like to show you a couple of ways that you can achieve that. So here's what you're gonna need to record a cover. Of course, you need your instrument, then you need some way to connect the bass to the computer. And the best way to do that, to, to transfer higher quality audio is to use an interface. You can use some sort of mixers and some pedals offer also like USB connectivity to your computer, but an audio interface is usually the best way to do it. Then of course you're gonna need either an instrument cable to go from your instrument into the interface directly, or if you have a DI box, you can use an XLR cable, you know, instrument, instrument cable to the DI box, DI box to your interface. And then you're gonna need some sort of recording editing software like a digital audio working station, a DAW, to record. Um, for example, Logic Pro X or GarageBand or Pro Tools or Cubase or something like that. And that's it. I'm gonna show you or m use mostly stock plugins of Logic Pro X, which is what I use, to show you how you can achieve a or record a bass cover. So before you start recording or turning on the camera <laughs> to record and upload a cover, there are two main ways that you can approach this. You can either you know, pre-record the audio, just sit down by yourself on the, the computer and the audio track and record that, and then perform in front of the camera, not worrying about the audio take, which is what a lot of, you know, people that just focus on covers on YouTube mainly do. You know, they pre-record the audio and then just perform for the camera to make it more, you know, show more action. I don't do that. The couple of covers that I've recorded is just my camera there, I hit record, I hit record on my computer, and that's it. So I record both at the same time. That usually takes a bit more time because, you know, I, I try to get out one take that's pretty decent. With the other approach, you can take as long as you need and repeat sections and just nail it perfectly and then, you know, just record the audio. Um, it's entirely up to you, you can do what feels right for you. I prefer to just deliver an entire performance when I'm talking about covers. For the demo videos that I do, I do do the first approach, you know, I pre-record the audio because I'm testing all the gear and whatnot. So I pre-record the audio and then just record the videos. So now let's change camera angles and show you the whole process on my computer. Okay guys, so now you're taking a look at my screen and here you can see four tracks. You know, the lower one here is the backing track, so I'm gonna play that for you. Like that. And if you can take a look here, I lowered the volume, minus 14 dB. So if I put it like all the way up, which is what it, it would normally, uh, you know, be at if you just import it to, to the track. Is a lot louder, right? Okay, and these other tracks right here are my bass takes. And you can see here one is marked SVT. This is the one that was actually in the video. Then I have Dingwall DI and this is actually the same track as this one. I just bounced it to a single audio file here. So we can ignore the upper one and just focus on this here. This one, the middle one, the Dingwall DI is just the Mesa Subway DI and you know my bass plugged in there and then into my interface. There's no processing applied to that. If you take a look here to the left, there's no there are no plugins, it's completely empty. On the SVT one, you can see I have something going on here, right? Now, let me show you a difference between those two 
real quick so you can get an idea of how the bass sounds like. So, so this is the chorus. And the, the, the sounds are different. This one, the SBT one, was recorded directly to Logic using the plugins available on my Universal Audio interface. That is not a must. You can just use this DI signal, which is what we're going to use for today. So I just wanted to show you what I had in my signal chain. Now, if we take a look at this, let me pull it down. Um, if I played it like just like that, you know, both tracks as recorded, You don't really hear the bass, right? Because it's too quiet in comparison to the backing track. And I'm also clipping here. You can see I'm already over zero dB. So we have a couple of options here. You can, first of all, just lower the backing track. Just like pull back the volume. I had it at minus 14 before. That is already pretty decent, right? But you're still kind of quiet in overall volume. We're gonna tackle that or talk about that in a bit, but you can definitely tell that it's kind of quiet compared to when you listen to the original track at full volume. Right? What we can do from here is apply some processing to the bass signal to you know, make it just sound better in the mix, make it fit better and also more audible and on computers, you know, laptop speakers or, or uh, headphones, uh, you know, iPhone speakers or, you know, mobile devices. Um, and even if you just want to listen to on your computer, you should, for, for example, add a high pass filter, at least that. And I'm going to use just the stock plugins, like I mentioned. So I'm going to use this the channel EQ. And here you can see, you know, you have a bunch of different frequencies available to use. And this one right here, this symbol is the symbol of a high pass filter. And you can start rolling it up. I'm gonna just solo this track. You can just roll it up until, I usually set it depending on the track, like at 60 hertz, 60 to 80, um, depending on, you know, the type of music. If you wanna keep all the low end, just set it at 30, because below 30, this is just rumble. Um, but, if you want to make the bass, you know, just be more, have more transfer across devices, I would definitely bump it up a little more. So let me put it at 60. And this is a slight curve. It's minus 12 dB per octave. It's not super heavy. Just without. Right? So you probably don't really hear a lot of difference, but it frees up some low end um, and that avoids like, you know, stocking up too much bass content on the track, which takes a lot of energy or, or dB or loudness. So you can push the bass a little harder if you remove some rumble here below. And if you're thinking, okay, why would I re want to remove bass content? I play bass, right? I'm gonna do a video specific on high pass filters, but just as an example, your bass amp, you know, your bass cabinet works as a high pass filter and a low pass filter. They are not reproducing the full range of tone. You know, you don't hear 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz. You, depending on the cab, you hear from like, I don't know, 50, 70 hertz above to like 5K, if you have a tweeter, it goes higher, but you're not listening to the full spectrum. So adding that makes it uh, not only sound better in the mix, but it also gets it a bit closer to what a bass cap would sound like. Of course, it's not the same as a cap simulation, but it's sort of you know going that direction. 
And you can see here the frequency spectrum as well, where the signal is happening, right? So what I do, right now we have this at 12 dB per octave. I usually just bump it at least to 18, just to really be safe that it's gonna sound well on most computers and you know, whatnot. If you have a lot of upper top end frequencies, if you can take a look at this at the spectrum here, I don't have that much. You know, it's mostly like in this region. Um, you probably wanna add a low pass filter to just remove some of that harshness. And especially if you use distortion or overdrive, that is really useful to tame some, you know, piercing frequencies. So I'm just gonna leave the track as like that. I'm not gonna do any boosting or cutting of frequencies because I like the tone and I think it works just to show the bass sound. And if we take a look at what I had on the SVT plugin chain, I have a high pass and low pass filter because the SVT had a bit more bite, so I wanted to tame that. And it's the same thing as we did. It's on, it's on 47 hertz. Um, then we have a compressor, which is an 1176 style compressor. With, well, it's a 1176 plugin, but it's by Universal Audio, so we're not gonna use that. And I have by Slate just a console, just to give it some more analog vibe. That's it. I didn't boost any EQ, nothing. So we're gonna do something similar to that. I'm gonna add a compressor now. And I'm gonna use kind of the same style of compressor. This is an 1176 style compression. And right now if I just press play, I'm gonna have a big volume boost on the bass signal. Compared to, to that, because this switch right here is active and I don't want that. I, I don't wanna auto gain my compressor. Now we have a bunch of options here to set the compressor, but before I explain you that, let me take a sip of my coffee, because it's Bass Tone Tuesday. Okay, so here, this is the threshold, and this tells the compressor when to start reacting to your signal. And Logic has a pretty cool feature that it not only shows you the gain reduction meter, but it also shows you when or where your signal is compared to the threshold. So let me play this. As you can see that the more I turn the compressor this way, the more my signal gets reduced because it's passing the threshold. You know. So, you don't want to do that <laughs> that high. And if you take a look at this one, the second control, oops, it was a 2 to 1 ratio compression. And that is pretty subtle. Usually typical on bass, most compressors go to 4 to 1 compression. That is, for example, the compression ratio that I have, or the lowest compression ratio that is available in an 1176, you know, the, the real analog unit. So we're gonna go for that too. And if I just turn that on, now I'm compressing about 3 dB there. I'm gonna boost it a little more. And then, boost the makeup gain a little bit. So you can take a look at this, I am peaking at 11.1. Without the compressor and with the compressor just a tiny bit wider. But these peaking notes are more consistent. Wait. You know, they, they, they come across much more consistent with the compressor on. So I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm not boosting a ton or not compressing a lot. And you can just easily just boost this all the way. You know, I'm compressing over 10 dB, right? It's pretty aggressive there. Um, you don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna back this off to just go into minus 
3 minus 4 dB of gain reduction. Without the compressor, they are much more consistent. I really like that. And I'm not compressing heavily, like I said. So we have this. And that, after that, I had this plugin right here, which is just to give some analog warmth. And I think, I, I don't think Logic has that as a stock plugin, so we're gonna just leave that as is. Now, if you play both side by side now, sounds pretty good, right? I personally liked when the backing track is blended a bit more with the bass because with the bass really loud, I don't know, it's kind of like a weird relationship between bass and the kick drum and uh, I don't know, I don't really like when the bass is too loud. Something like that would be more like my taste. But there's one more step that I like to do when I record something like this. And if you take a look at the backing track right here, there's an EQ happening. And I notched 125 hertz by minus 12 dB and also added high pass filter. So let me un or uh, you know turn this off. Turn it on. You know, I removed a lot of the bass content there. And that is because I don't want to have the original bass signal and my bass tone stacking or fighting against each other. And there are different ways on how you can do something like this. You can, like I did here, add a, just bump this very aggressively, you know. Right, the bass is gone when I turn this on. But also a bit of the kick drum. You lose some kick drum punch. That is entirely up to you. You could just roll this up and then be done with that. Now the bass, my bass is, you know, can be heard better. There's too much bass for me. So better. The other option, for example, is to do what I did before and just not use so much high pass filter. I think I had like 50. And then find a frequency where the bass has a lot of uh, loudness, so to speak. So I'm gonna boost very aggressively. You hear I'm gonna move this around. Also here, for example. But that they do is a very or here is a very uh, you know a, a lot of low end so you could, you could just like do this boost it make it narrower boost some more there. like that That way you get some more kick drum punch and you remove a lot of the bass, you know, uh, rumble or low end content and then you can just put your bass in. And definitely have a good sound there. The other thing that you can do is to add a multi-band compressor to the backing track so that only the low end of the track gets compressed and you can put your bass on top of that. It's even better if that multiband compressor has a sidechain that is triggered every time that you play. The Logic stock one does not have that, but we can still make it work. So I'm gonna open that. We have four bands here. 
we're gonna set the first one to about 130 Hz so there and we're gonna set the compression to 4 like before uh, it doesn't go to 4 but still I'm gonna play the track it's barely compressing here we have to lower the threshold so I'm gonna lower it quite a bit and then load the makeup gain of that band only. Watch people's heads are roll. Watch people's heads are roll. A lot of low and content disappeared that way. Watch people's heads are roll. If you combine that with the EQ, Watch people's heads are roll. you know it's pretty much gone. Watch people's heads are roll. As you can hear your bass pretty clearly that way. So I turn them both off. And there's, you know, if you have everything off, it stacks a lot. The other thing that you can do is just add a normal compressor and add a side chain to that to your bass signal. So I'm gonna put that. And what that does is that every time you play, the compressor is going to react to your player and lower the volume of the backing track. But because this is not a multiband, it's going to lower or compress the whole backing track. But we're going to give it a try anyway. I'm going to use the, this one, the Platinum Digital. What? And it is triggered by the sidechain. I don't want this. What? This is with the compressor off. You know, it's a bit quieter that way. You can experiment with that to find what works the best for you. Now, if you take a look at the, this part of the mixer, I am like, peaking at minus 5.3, but that is still is gonna be kind of quiet compared to, you know, when you put up a song up on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, because we have to get closer to zero dB, but without getting above that. And if you take a look at this right here, I have a bunch of plugins, and they're not doing a awful lot. I'm not playing EQ or anything here, but let me show you what that does. One thing that I do is, if you take a look at that, like I mentioned, we're peaking at minus 5.3. I try to lower that, to, like select both tracks, just turn both down. To get around like minus 12, you know, minus 18, minus 12, I've mentioned this in other videos, but in that area, so that I have more headroom to bump things up later like that now the first plugin is this console emulation is summing console emulation it's adding some some overdrives you know saturation to the sound and you know this one doesn't come with logic uh, now this one is a compressor a bus compressor it's also adding drive and it's compressing 1 dB only. You can leave this off if you want, it is not necessary. Then I have a tape machine to add some more analog warmth. You can pull this out. This gives you a more uh, kind of percussive sound if you don't push this too hard. Because tape uh, rolls off a bit of the transient if I bump this. It's a bit more percussive, more punchy if you don't push it too hard. I'll just leave it in the middle. 
And the last one, this is a limiter. You're gonna need this, not exactly this plug, but you're gonna need a limiter to bump up the volume to a you know loud level. And I'm pumping this like a 11 dB or something. <laughs> um, we don't have to use this exact plugin, but we definitely need a limiter. So let me turn this off and then grab this one, which is the stock logic limiter. Now, let me play again the song without this. We've got like a minus nine. If I turn this off, sorry, on. You know, there's a difference in volume. It's boosting up the whole volume. So this is gonna prevent that I go over zero dB. So I'm not gonna um, clip the signal. And this is how much gain I'm boosting. You wanna boost this? I don't wanna. I don't wanna blow your ears. But you ideally want to push this so you're close to zero. It's just experiment. Kind of like that to make it really loud and you know, be comp or be able to hold up to a song on YouTube or a song on Spotify or something like that. You gotta experiment how much you boost. Um, if you boost too much, you're gonna probably clip the bass signal, depending on uh, how much you're boosting, but. This is what you definitely want to use to bring up the volume of the track. You don't want to do this to boost the track like super loud. You don't want to do that. Um, you definitely want to keep your volumes here going into the master fader uh, in a healthy level so that you're peaking at like some, you know, minus 18, minus 12 dB so that you can then add the limiter. And that is pretty much it what I would do to record like a cover like this. If you find out that, for example, your bass is not cutting through or, or you can hear perfectly on your headphones and on your mixing monitors or whatever you have, but it's not sounding well on laptop speakers, for example, or your phone, you can, for example, boost around, let me just demonstrate, around 700 Hertz, like something like this, let me show just the bass. Here it's that area. Of course, you don't want to go like 10 dB extra. Maybe you're going to need something like that depending on the mix, but just as to demonstrate, uh, you can boost around this frequency and also around like one point something. It sounds a bit nasty. But against the mix. You know, it makes the bass stand out a bit more. You gotta be careful how much you boost, but that could definitely help you to get, you know, more presence in the mix. I hope you guys found this helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the content that's coming to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.